Awesome. So it is live right now. Hello, everyone. Are you there, honey? I'm going to hang up and get on Periscope. Yep, I'm live. It says we are live. Okay, great. Talk to you later. So where are you going to be popping in on? Periscope or here? Uh, probably on here. We'll send you the questions here. Okay, cool. All right. Thanks, hon. All right. Bye. bye. Hello, Periscope peeps. Sorry I'm a little late. This is all very new to me. Um, this is my first Periscope. Thank you guys for tuning in. As we're going live on Periscope, we are also filming on Google Hangout, so you can check us out on both links. And um, if you have any questions, please just pop in and uh, ask me, and I will do my best to answer them. And so this is new for us. So for a little, uh, you're getting the behind the scenes, actually, the filming behind the scenes. So let me pull up my notes here and let's get started. Awesome. So today I wanted to talk to everyone about self-care and uh, what foods to eat during menstruation? Because I had a lot of questions. A lot of people wrote in that they weren't sure exactly um, the foods that they should be eating. They were feeling a lot of bloat. So I hope that I get to cover this today. And um, if you've got a pop off, that's cool too. I'll, um, I will, um, if you want to just uh, message me, I will make sure to get the replay to you. So one of the first things I wanted to talk about was. I wanted to remind us actually the root of menstruation. And I really believe that the root of menstruation is a chance for a woman's body to purify. So as we go through all the things that I'm going to tell you today, um, I just want you to remember that this is a chance for your body to be purifying. It's a very sacred time for a woman, although we can get a little, um, annoyed with with that time of the month it really is something that's really beautiful and i should probably introduce myself my name is tara Magalski, and for people who are new that are popping in on um, twitter uh, my name is tara Magalski, and uh, i'm a holistic health coach so if you have any questions or you want to learn more about me please go to my website at taramagalski.com so I wanted to start off with some easy, very simple self-care tips. And a lot of these, most of us know, but interestingly enough, we don't do them. So resting. My number one tip for when you are moving through that time of the month is to rest, especially on the very first day, because the first day is where our body is working really hard to eliminate toxins and to detoxify the body. Like I said, we're purifying during this time. And I don't know about some of the people who are tuning in, could be a very rough day for some of us women. I know that my very first day menstruating is really, really tough. So take it easy, listen to your body and get the rest that your body is craving. The next is, I've got a lot of questions. People were asking about exercise. And is it a good idea to exercise during your menstruation? And I think that it is. I think that it actually helps me with my cramps. It helps 
for me to get the blood flowing um, and the fluid moving throughout my body. So I always advise clients to exercise, but I tell them to go light. I mean, this isn't the time of the month to start lifting heavy weights and uh, be pushing it really hard. So great ways to exercise is yoga. Um, I also love to take classes. I take dance classes. I do something that's really uplifting to my spirit during that time of the month. Because you know, we can be a little emotional. And um, yeah, doing exercise, long walks, yoga, things that are really going to um, make you slow down, be more present, and um, have more self-care for your body. So going to pull this up here just in case anyone's here. Awesome. And another great thing that you can do is get enough sleep. Get as, as much sleep as your body needs. Um, sometimes during that time of the month, I feel that I need like nine, 10 hours of sleep. That's usually just the first, the first two days. But if your body is exhausted and tired, just listen to it. Listen to your body and, 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 and treat it well, because we only have one going through this life. It's our temple. And reducing stress is another huge self-care tip. Find healthy ways to manage your stress. That's through meditation, through prayer, through yoga. Um, and another tip that I have that most people think is funny and they, they laugh at me, but I always say, let's, let's get into a positive mood. One way that you can treat yourself well is to do daily positive affirmations. I know it might sound silly, but I swear to you, it really works. It's the power of, of speaking out and manifestation of how you want your day to go. So daily affirmations is key for me. It's something that I try and do every day. I actually have something here I want to show you guys. Um, and this is, well, I can't really see. Here it is. And this is a code of conduct. And I use this for my daily affirmations and I've got it laminated here and it basically is exactly how I want to live each day. So I keep this and I put it right next to my bed and every day I read my code of conduct. Um, so it's just a really great way for me to get into the space of how I want to, to present myself for the day. And my last little self-care tip is pamper yourself. Pamper yourself with a hot bath, um, a massage, splurge on a massage if you need. Acupuncture can also be really great during that time of the month. Um, I love to get a good book, uh, have a glass of herbal tea, maybe something. Um, Yogi Tea has some really great um, menstrual cramp. They have, um, it's basically a muscle relaxant, so they use a lot of herbs in there. It's really amazing. Get a good book and just take it easy. If anybody has any questions about self-care, if you want to pop in now and write me, that would be cool too. I'm here for you. But if not, I will keep on going. Let me just write in the box here. Any questions on self-care, now's the time. If not, I will keep moving and talk about diet. So diet is, everyone's always asking, what should we eat? What should we eat? The key really is to remember that optimizing your energy and relaxing your mood swings is key. And you can do that by having you know, a balanced diet. And it's very, very simple to do. Most of the studies that I have seen have said that the best way to relieve menstrual cramps is to have a plant-based diet or a vegetarian diet during that time of the month, which makes sense because if you think about it, there's a lot of hormones happening and there's a lot of things going on in your body. So if you're eating a lot of animal protein that has hormones in it, that could really just make your hormones fluctuate and go really crazy. So it makes a lot of sense to me. Plus you can get a lot of protein and fiber through fruits and veggies. But that being said, my rule of thumb is really, you know, everything in moderation, 
you know, whole foods, no processed foods, no refined sugars, um, no refined carbohydrates. You really want to stick to um, veggies, fruits, and you want to get your protein. I'm going to give you a lot of examples of things that you can do, but you really have to listen to your body. If you're a big meat eater and you haven't had any meat and it's that time of the month, you're probably going to feel very weak. So maybe you do need to have some meat. But I advise that you get something that's very healthy. So you get free range chicken, grass fed and grass finished meat. Um, go to a local farmer's market and get a reliable source of your protein. So you know that it's not something that has a lot of, um, you know, pesticides and hormones, because that could be um, pretty detrimental if you're eating meats that have a lot of hormones and antibiotics in them during your period. So another thing is to have a lot of high fiber and you can get that in your vegetables, but they're really, really great to eliminate excess hormones out of your body, especially estrogen, which is one of the main hormones that we're producing during menstruation. So you definitely want to remember that dark leafy greens are your friends. <laughs> And of course you wanna get uh, adequate protein and healthy fats that are going to keep your sugar very even. We don't wanna have things, like I said before, refined sugars, processed foods, things that are going to make our blood sugar spike and then crash, because that is going to do a number on your hormones this time of the month. And actually, any time of, any time of the month. I like to try and stay away from refined, um, white flours, white sugars, because that's really where you're going to get that, um, those spikes and the dips in your blood sugar. And that just leaves you being cranky, possibly having headaches, um, and definitely having mood swings. So I'm going to sum up a few things of some foods to eat, and then I'll break it down into categories. But you're going to hear me repeating quite a bit. I'm going to be repeating a lot of different um, a lot of the same foods. Um, so as you hear them, if you have a pen and a pencil, uh, who has a pencil these days, a pen, just write it down. And uh, again, if you have any questions, just a message. So foods to eat are dark leafy greens. You've got your kale, your collards, your broccoli. Um, broccoli is amazing. It is a very good quality fat. And it's very great to... Um, keep your hormones stable. Um, it's very high in fiber, and that can also ease the bloating. Um, it aids in digestion, can help you get rid of uh, puffiness, and it also aids in water retention. So it's a natural um, flushing agent. So most people don't know that about, about broccoli. They think that broccoli can give you gas, but actually it's not supposed to give you gas. It's supposed to help relieve because it is a natural flushing agent. It's supposed to keep the fluid in your body moving um, regularly. And that also helps um, with fatigue. Fruits and vegetables, again, um, salmon, anything that has omega-3 fatty acids, which are the healthy fats, um, great oils are hemp oil, coconut oil, avocado, olive oils, but you want to make sure you have high quality oils, high quality olive oils. And then I just want to break it down into, um, into sections. I want to just talk about magnesium because a lot of women don't know this, but magnesium is a natural muscle relaxant. So that is very key during, um, during that time of the month when you're menstruating. So a lot of times when women, the doctors have found that when women have a lot of bad cramps and they're suffering during their, um, their period, it's because they are magnesium deficient. So that being said, foods that you want to eat are bananas and pumpkin seeds they are a great also way um, to ease water retention and the bloat, and they're very, very high in magnesium. They also help with mood swings, and it also helps to regulate serotonin levels. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in a second, but some other foods to eat are nuts, um, fish, like I said, fish that's high in omega-3 fatty acids, dark leafy greens again, 
soybeans and avocado. These are all very good sources of magnesium. And just so for people who don't know about magnesium, magnesium is a mineral found in dark leafy greens, um, fruits, nuts, legumes, and whole grains. And why it is so important is because it functions in the body and it includes muscle and enzyme function and the production of proteins. So it aids in the conversion of tryptophan, which is an amino acid, and that transmits it into the neurotransmitter serotonin. So if you abuse alcohol or have a poor diet or you're magnesium deficient, this is going to result in low levels of serotonin. So this is a really good thing to know also for people who suffer with depression. And I know that during, during the time of the month, we, um, we definitely suffer from mood swings. And I don't know about you guys, but my mood actually very much fluctuates. So it's good to know that maybe you just need a little bit more of magnesium in your diet and start eating foods that are high in magnesium. Also, foods that are high in calcium and vitamin D can also act as a muscle relaxant. So again, you're going to notice that I'm, I'm saying the same things over and over again, but it's just good to know that leafy greens help with this as well. Almonds, soybeans, sesame seeds, almond or coconut milk, and seaweed. These are also really great. Um, my favorite grain is quinoa. It's very high in vitamin B and it's rich in many proteins and it's the highest in fiber of all the grains. So this is a very, very good complex carbohydrate that can help you regulate your mood swings and it gives you a nice stable um, energy source. What's great about quinoa is that it doesn't make your blood sugar spike and crash, it releases slowly in your bloodstream so you can maintain um, a high lo level of energy for a long period of time. And um, another area I wanted to cover is iron because a lot of people think that during that time of the month that they can become anemic, which they can. So I'm not a doctor. Um, I'm all about healing the body with whole foods. So if you are having issues, please speak with your doctor. <laughs> But some foods that you can eat that are great sources of protein, um, I'm sorry, iron, um, are quinoa, chickpeas, oysters, soybeans, pumpkin seeds again, lentils, spinach, sesame seeds, seaweed, oatmeal, and of course your legumes and your beans, your kidneys, lima, navy beans, those are all really good. And remember these are plant sources of um, iron and then there's also um, there's also as well animal protein sources and great sources for animal protein for iron are chicken liver um, oysters again sorry oysters shouldn't have been in this list um, clams beef liver um, lean ground beef turkey tuna eggs shrimp lamb um, you know, we all know what's, what's the good animal sources of protein. But I would, I would err on on the on the on the lighter side during your period, because it's we're already having a hard time. Our body is working so hard to eliminate toxins that you really want to go easy with your di with your digestion. So, foods that are easy to digest is probably a good rule of thumb. But again, if you're a meat eater and you really have to have your meat. Stick with the ones that are very, very um, full of the ones that are full of iron. Now let's get to the fun stuff. What are the foods to avoid? Avoid caffeine, sodas, anything that has high content of high um, caffeine in it. Salty foods, foods that have a lot of sodium. So that's probably most of your processed foods. Um, of course, things that have a lot of salt in them. Tobacco products. Um, alcohol. Alcohol is not the best thing during our period, but um, sometimes a glass of red wine can help ease the cramps, but not high. Um, it's just not advised to have, um, you can actually get quite lightheaded when it's during that time of the month. If you're drinking heavily, you can get dehydrated very quickly. Sugar, um, avoid sugar in all white flour products. 
And I always like to say to please stay away from dairy. And if you are going to have any dairy, I would stick with yogurt um, because that's a little bit, um, it has more probiotics in it. It's better for your digestional, your lower intestine. But um, there's a lot of hormones that can be in dairy products. So you really don't want to put that in your body um, this time uh, of the month. So if you can, sub that out with some coconut milk, some almond milk. Um, you can you can make it at home. You can get it at Whole Foods or basically even Starbucks now has um, coconut milk. So, so it's pretty easy to get because if you have a lot of these foods like the caffeine, the sugars, the salts, it can really make you cranky. It can make you irritable. Um, it can make you prone to headaches um, and even more cramping. So um, err on the side of not having these products if you can. And does anyone have any questions now? I'm just kind of seeing, checking in on my Google Hangout. Um, okay, no big deal. Um, I'm going to keep going here. I wanted to talk a little bit about supplements because I think supplements are really important. Um, I don't take a lot of them, but I do take some. I do take a multivitamin, and a multivitamin is very key during this time of the month because you, you really want to make sure you're not mineral deficient. So a lot of times we think that we're going to be able to get a lot of our nutrients from our food, but, but we don't. So because we have cravings and during that time of the month, a lot of us want to have unhealthy food. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I certainly like to emotional eat. So if I find that I'm not eating the right types of foods during the first two days of my period. I want to make sure that I'm, I'm, um, I'm getting my my minerals. So fish oil supplements are really great. I also take a liquid form of omega three six nine, so I get all my amino acids. Um, and also here I have a little list here I want to read to you: calcium citrate, and that's up to twelve hundred milligrams per day. Magnesium citrate or glycinate, and that's 400 milligrams per day. Vitamin B6, and that's 50 milligrams per day as part of a B-complex supplement. Because B6 is actually very helpful to relieve uh, bloating and to boost your mood and give you energy. Um, but if you want to do the all-natural ways, um, potatoes, bananas, and oatmeal are very high in vitamin B6. Vitamin E is a 400 IU per day, and flaxseed, two tablespoons of fresh ground uh, daily. But a lot of these you can also get in your food, but if you know that you're not eating a balanced diet, then you can supplement. For me, what I like to try and do is I have my multivitamin that covers quite a bit of the list that I just um, told you about, and I get that in liquid form at Whole Foods. And I do my flax seeds and my chia seeds in my smoothies in the morning. So I just ground them up or you can buy them ground and you put them in your smoothie and mix them up. And um, it's pretty easy, uh, pretty easy to do to get your nutrients. And I also really like herbs. And there are a few herbs I just wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, and those are liver herbs. These are herbs that stimulate the function of the liver. And that's really important to be flushing and getting out the toxins. It's basically our livers are the central system for getting rid of waste. So if you're feeling, I know some women can get constipated during that time of the month or they can feel, you know, things just get a little bit backed up. It happens. There's a lot happening. You can get teas or um, you can actually get herbs and press them and put them in a little um, tea, um, tea little, um, like a satchel. And I put dandelion root, milk thistle, artichoke, and turmeric. Um, turmeric is a great anti-inflammatory. So you can put that in your salads. You can put that um, as a spice in your foods. Um, or you can literally just sprinkle it in your tea as well. Another amazing um, 
uh, herb that I just learned about a couple of years ago that I started taking was called Vitex. Um, and it's probably one of the most commonly used one to help with regulate ovarian dysfunction. And I was starting to get very bad cystic acne. And I realized that it was a lot of environmental stressors, but it was also the fact that my liver and my kidneys were not functioning properly. So started taking the Vitex every day and sipping on some tea and tightening up my diet a bit and removing dairy and animal products. And I started to see a real difference in my skin. Now, dealing with menstrual cramps, there's many different things that you can do. I mean, of course, we all know we, I personally, the very first day need to have um, ibuprofen or an Advil or a Midol handy because no matter what I do, the pain, um, the very first day, it only lasts pretty much. I can tell if I'm starting to get the cramps, I usually have my Advil or whatever next to me. Take that 45 minutes, it's, it's gone. But if I don't have Advil or any type of anti-inflammatory, I end up taking, um, I have a heating pad. I can also, um, I have a heating pad, so I'll lay on my right side and I'll put the heating pad on my lower belly and um, I'll meditate, do breathing exercises, and then also put myself in a warm bath. Um, that's a very nice way to just kind of ease the, the cramping. Also drink tons of water. Um, water is going to be an easy, easy way to help your liver function. So water is key um, to keep your hormones and your estrogen levels balanced. I also love to do a light yoga. This is after those initial cramps come and I'm starting to ease the pain of that initial cramp. I always like to do a nice yoga class to just kind of get the, the blood flowing through and the fluid moving through my body. Um, and one other thing I want to uh, mention is dark chocolate. They always say that dark chocolate is, is bad for you. It has a lot of sugar, but from what I know, it actually during, you know, the your time of the month, it helps to reduce stress and it actually helps to uh, improve your mood because it produces endorphins that are your body's natural painkillers. And it's very, very high in magnesium. So it's also a muscle relaxant. So don't feel bad if you want to indulge a little bit on some dark chocolate. Milk chocolate, not so much. Dark raw chocolate is probably the way to go. Um, so does anyone have any questions? I'm just going to ask now. Any questions? Let me see who's live. We've got a few people live here. I just don't see them. All right, well, some of the questions that I have had recently were, what helps to fight the bloat? In my experience, the, the best thing to fight the bloat is to have water with lemon. Water with lemon is a great way to to flush the system and i always say to have that first thing in the morning so i'm just going to fix the camera here have that first thing in the morning because you, there's nothing in your in your system so if you drink i always put a glass of water with lemon next to my bed so when i wake up in the morning it's the first thing that i do another great flushing agent is celery so that aids in digestion helps you regulate your bowel movements decreases fluid retention, and it's also great if you are suffering from gas. So um, I personally put that in my green juice, so you can juice the celery. Um, you can put kale, um, lemon, ginger, um, sometimes people put parsley as well, and that's a really great drink to have every day of the year, but also very important during, during menstruation. Green juices, like I said. The other thing that I love to always have in my fridge is watermelon. 
Watermelon is 92% water. It is the perfect hydrator. So it's great for inflammation. So watermelon is like one of my like favorite, favorite, favorite things because it just flushes, flushes, and flushes your body. Another great thing for inflammation is rosemary and turmeric again. Um, this is great if you have an upset stomach. Um, again, I would say no sodium. Um, I would do beans, soybeans, lima beans, and lentils because they'll increase your potassium, which will, which will help you get rid of some of the bloat that you're holding from salty foods. No alcohol if you're feeling that bloat. Of course, fresh whole foods, no processed or packaged foods. And if you're having a real problem eliminating, um, get a cereal that has a lot of fiber in it um, just to make sure that you're eliminating. You check in here. And another question that I had was foods that fight acne. Okay, foods that are gonna fight acne. This is something I know a lot about because I struggled with this since I was 16 years old. It's been a long time. I won't give away my age, but it's been it's been 20 years. And I really tried everything and I tightened up my diet. I, you name it, I did it. But the most important thing that you can do holistically is to have anti-inflammatory foods. You don't wanna have anything in your body that is causing inflammation. I can only speak from experience and I have found that dairy is definitely not good for my skin because I get cystic acne and um, meats. So I have to be very, very careful with um, animal proteins. So usually I'll start to break out or I'll start to feel some, some inflammation in my skin happening about seven to 10 days before my period. So I just make sure I put it in my calendar. I actually have a really cool app called the Period Tracker. And I make sure to just make you know, make the adjustments in my diet so I'm not eating a lot of um, of meat. I actually have to tell you, I have one right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a cystic pimple that's happening underneath my skin as we speak. And it is because, I believe, I went to a party the other day and had cheese and turkey meat. And I don't eat a lot of this stuff. And the moment that I eat it, I get an inflammation. So I really do believe that, that that's the cause because I'm not due to, it's not that even that time of the month for me yet. So um, great foods you can eat are Brazil nuts. They are powerful antioxidants. They're rich in selenium, um, almonds, um, and Foods that have a lot of zinc, because zinc is a great for your skin. It really, they say, I'm not a doctor, but they say that zinc can control the release of male hormones. So the testosterone in our body. So we want to have foods that do not kickstart our acne. And as we know, having um, unhealthy levels of testosterone does. So zinc can help to balance that. So again, we have oysters, beans, poultry, and fish. Um, they say that I stay away from poultry. I would much rather do fish instead. Um, salmons, um, flaxseed, those are great to help with inflammation for your skin. Uh, sweet potatoes, carrots, bell peppers, cantaloupe, basically any foods that are really rich in beta carotene as well. And beta carotene is found in, in basically your orange, yellow, red uh, hued fruits and vegetables. Um, and that's really, really great because it's another natural nutrient that helps to enhance selenium's benefit to your skin. Um, again, do not have refined sugars or white flour. This is horrible for acne. Um, and concentrate on eating foods that are rich in vitamin C, like oranges, tomatoes, melons. Um, now it's not going to cure you of the breakouts, 
but um, the vitamins are really great because they strengthen your cell walls and it can help um, prevent your skin from scarring. Um, and that's something that I, I looked into because as we know with cystic acne, um, it can leave deep scars. So, um, so yeah, I hope that that was helpful for everybody. Um, if there's more questions, please let me know. Um, now's the time to chime in. I've kind of finished my spiel. Um, and you guys can let me know if you got anything else for me. Let me email. Ladies, ladies. Well, what I can do is I can They did email me a few questions. So I can go through that list of questions and see if I could be helpful. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> I lost you. Can you guys see me? All right, awesome. Let's see here. Q&A, what questions do you have? Awesome, I see you guys. Oh, wait, let me just let them know. I am live. Let me just see. All right, sorry guys. I um I have a little technical difficulties. So how can some of the questions that came in are how can you create personal affirmations? You know, I personally, I personally like to journal. So for me, I like, like I said, I'll read to you guys some of my code of conduct. This basically has become my, my personal affirmation um, go-to list. So I think it's really important that everybody does one of these for themselves as well. So, for example, my boyfriend and I came up with this. Our code of contact, conduct, 
One, read the code of conduct daily. Two, I put God first. Three, we love on each other daily. We are a beautiful, power, sober couple. We really wanted to go through a period where we weren't drinking anymore. So we made affirmations that we can repeat daily to get to that desired goal. We execute the miracle morning. We practice self-care every day. Now, this is just something that I do, but you can write down anything that speaks to you. So for example, I am powerful. I am beautiful. I am going to have an amazing day. I mean, you really have to come up with things that really speak to your heart. So I would suggest starting with a code of conduct of how you want to live you every day. Start off with just a quick little, you know, outline and then go from there. The next question is what kind of teas are good for relieving cramps? Um, Yogi actually, um, Yogi tea has amazing ones. I actually have one um, that's in my counter. It's just a women's hormone balancing tea. And like I said earlier, you just have to get things um, with herbs in them. So the Yogi teas have tons of different herbs, but again, like your dandelion, your, which is great for digestion, um, anything with like a milk thistle, things that are going to be really soothing to the body. Um, but Yogi tea, you can get that anywhere. You can just find that at any grocery store um, and get the one for women, women's tea. It's a women's menstrual tea. He said, not to eat refined sugars during a period, but I get such bad cravings. What food, uh, foods can I eat to satisfy these cravings? We all get cravings, right? Um, I get cravings too. I, I tend to try to eat more fruit because the fruit is sweet enough to where you are getting enough of that sugar that you're craving. Um, so fresh fruit, apricots, you can even get um, frozen. I know a lot of times I'll, I'll crave ice cream. Um, they do have healthy ice cream now. They have coconut milk ice cream, which is really good. It's a vegan ice cream. Um, you can also get all natural fruit bars and those are really great or you can make them at home. Really simple to do. Get an ice tray and um, put in your blender. You can put in your blender um, some fresh fruits and a little bit of coconut water or regular water. Mix it up and then freeze them, which is really yummy too. Um, yeah, and like I said, eat things that are sweet um, that taste really good. I also put um, fruit on my salads. That's another easy way. I put raspberries, I put apricots, peaches. Um, I eat a lot of peaches. Those are really tasty as well. What yoga poses are good? Oop, where'd that go? What yoga poses are good for menstrual cramps and which ones are uh, cramps and which ones are bad? Okay, I'm not a yoga instructor, but just based on the basics of knowing a little bit about the body, um, downward dog is really great because it's really stretching out your lower um, your lower back and the sciatica that you're feeling. Um, I would probably stay away from any of the twisting, you know, where you're kind of going down, you're twisting on your side. I think that could be um, really hard on your stomach, on, you know, on your ovaries. I also, but I do know that it's great to detoxify the body because you're actually wringing out the organs. Um, I would just go easy. Think about what, um, when in doubt, think about what women do when they're pregnant, right? They don't go upside down. They don't do a lot of the ringing poses. Um, they do more standing poses very lightly. You wanna just get the, the blood flowing. So downward dog, child's pose cat cow that's where you're breathing on all fours um and curving your back um yeah so i hope that answered your question but again i'm not a yoga instructor so um i don't know um don't know all the poses that are good or bad i just kind of know just basic the next question is i feel very lazy during my period and, and end up 
binge watching TV? What's your guilty pleasure on your period? Hmm. I always, it's not really guilty pleasure. Well, this is one of my pleasures is um, getting massages. I always, I love to be rubbed. So I'm always like, if I can splurge, it's always during that time of the month because my back gets all beat up and my legs hurt, my knees hurt, my feet hurt. So I always uh, treat myself to a to about a half hour to an hour massage. And as far as guilty pleasure of eating, I would have to say it's carbs. I eat, I'll, I will eat carbs. I will eat things that I normally wouldn't eat. So I'll eat breads or pastas, <laughs> but I'll try and do gluten-free or, you know, whole grain, but that would be my guilty pleasure. Sometimes, you know, you just want to fill your belly and sleep. So that would be my guilty pleasure. Let me just text my girls, see if they want any more questions. Take this out. But again, we all feel lazy during our period and that time of the month, and that's okay too. Honor your body. Honor your body. Resting is really great during that time of the month. It, it's not bad to rest. It's a time where our body really needs it. I think another question just came in. That's okay. You can move the okay, awesome. So yes, this is such an amazing opportunity. So I just want to thank you guys for having me. Um, let's talk period now is so important because there are women all over the world that are struggling and there's women all over the world that don't have the basic materials, pads, tampons. In some countries, they have cloths. So it's really important that we start talking about things that we can do to take care of our bodies, our spirit, mind, and bodies. So if everyone can share this video and hashtag let's face it period, that would be amazing. And we're also doing a really cool um, campaign online. So you take a picture of you and your friends wearing red lipstick and you hashtag let's face it period and you nominate friends to do the same. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and I will see you next time. <laughs> okay. Ooh. All right. So, ladies, I will stop the broadcast now and you guys will be able to edit that out, hopefully. I hope it didn't look too crazy with me looking at both screens, but I just wanted to kind of engage different audiences. Um, thank you, thank you for having me, and let's keep talking. Have a good day. <laughs>